Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Gridiron 2023. Ron Poniewoz and Larry Kelly are your Gridiron team. And Larry Kelly is a member of the Luxembourg Garbett Kelly and George Law Firm and the varsity baseball coach at, at uh, Shenango. Larry, thanks for joining us again. Always a pleasure, my brother. Always a pleasure. A uh, couple good games last week, uh, and they're only going to get better moving forward. So this is going to get good. This is going to really get good. Yeah, but that's for sure. Our athlete of the week did not carry the pigskin. That's but right. He carried, he carried something to a gold medal in the uh, state cross country championships. Tell us about Jackson Shodell. Yeah, Jackson Shodell of Mohawk is going to be our athlete of the week this week. Um, Jackson Shodell is a junior for Mohawk, and he won the PIAA Class 1A cross country championship, running to the gold in 16 minutes and nine seconds. So he he's uh, fresh off of the uh, WPIL cross country championship as well. What a performance! You know, it's a uh, it's a very special uh, feat to be able to win state gold in any sport. You know, certainly, and then and now you're talking an individual sport like that. I mean, naturally, you run for a team, but uh, you know, he won the individual gold medal, so that's a very very big deal for Jackson Shodell. Winning a state championship in any sport is very difficult. It's very difficult. I've been in three state championship games, uh, two in hoops, one in baseball. We're one and two. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, just to get there is a feat and an accomplishment. Uh, there are a lot of teams. There are a lot of runners in Pennsylvania. And to be one of the last ones standing is really an accomplishment. Uh, you know, Mohawk has had a history of, uh, you know, track and field champions through the years. And, uh, you know, it started with Ronnie Lape many years ago, and it seems to have continued. Uh, what an outstanding performance to be at your best when the stakes are the highest. Uh, that's what athletic competition is all about. Yeah, it's all about the journey, too. You know, not just the destination, but it's... Uh... You know, how things went along the way, the ups and downs and the peaks and valleys, for sure. And that's what you remember. I always say that, especially in a team sport, you might not remember the final result, uh, but you'll always remember the journey. It's indelibly etched in your mind. And when you get together with your teammates 20 years after the journey ended, you know, you rehash with a smile on your face everything it took to get to that championship game. Mm -hmm. That's right. So congratulations to Jackson Shodell for winning the PIAA Class 1A cross country title with his uh, time of 16 minutes, nine seconds. And Larry, uh, for gridiron purposes, let's talk about uh, three, uh, three young men uh, that actually do play football and uh, that had uh, very nice performances last week in, in victories. First off, let's go with Ju uh, Justin Boston of Mohawk, 149 rushing yards on 11 carries. He had two touchdowns in that win, a 42 nothing win over Burrell. He's had a good year. Uh, this isn't the first time that uh, he he's had an outstanding game on the ground. Uh, he's had a few of them. And, uh, you know, this was special. He's, he's averaging 14 yards a carry uh, in this game. And, uh, to do it in a playoff game again, uh, you know, when the when the games get to be the biggest, you know, you want to have your best performance. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that might be Justin's best performance of the year. 149 on 11 carries. Really outstanding. Yeah, very efficient for sure. And then Union had a couple uh, nice performances in a 51-37 victory over Burgettstown. Braylon Thomas, you know, did what Braylon Thomas does, uh, passing, rushing, that sort of thing. He accounted for all seven Union touchdowns in the victory. Four of them were rushing, uh, and then three were passing. And we'll touch on that in a little bit. But, Larry, uh, your thoughts on uh, Braylon Thomas? Uh, have we – It. when was the last time we had a young man from Lawrence County account for seven touchdowns? That's a feat. Again, yeah. four on the ground, three through the air. 
Uh, I've been watching football a long time. I can't remember somebody accounting for seven touchdowns. The closest thing that I can recall is in the Whippeo semifinal game when Geno Stone was a senior. He scored five touchdowns and had three interceptions. Uh, that should have been a little portent of things to come with young Mr. Stone, who, by the way, as you know, because you guys are doing a great job of reporting it, leads the NFL in interceptions. He picked off his sixth one uh, mm -hmm. yesterday. So uh, maybe Braylon Thomas will be playing in the NFL one of these days. Don't know. But seven touchdowns in a playoff game, special. Yeah, the uh, the photo that I ran in today's paper of that, of Geno Stone. Now that you mentioned it, it looks like he could have had a second interception because the one that he did get was on the sideline, and the picture looks as though it, that was in the end zone, and he had his hand on that ball. So it looks like he could have had a, a second interception yesterday against Seattle. When Geno gets his hands on the ball, he very seldom drops it. So uh, he's great hands, just a great kid. So proud of him. He's a Red Hurricane. Uh, he's a good. He's a good young man, and uh, had the pleasure of coaching him up when he was a little kid. He was in ninth grade. You know, I had Gino, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, just a great kid. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, let's talk about Dane Jonke, who was on the receiving end of three of those touchdown passes from Braylon Thomas. One of them was uh, over sixty yards, I believe, sixty-eight yards in that 51-37 victory over Burgettstown, Larry? You know, he's a tight end, is he not, Dane? Uh, uh, possibly a wide receiver, yeah. Well, I, he this isn't the first time he, he he's caught a touchdown pass over 50 yards. It's mm -hmm. happened several times this year, and uh, I thought he lined up as a tight end or maybe a slot receiver, but, uh, you know – to catch 50, 60 yard touchdown passes and to do it repeatedly throughout the season speaks volumes about the talent that this young man has. He had a, a fourth one called back on offensive holding. And soon as uh, Braylon Thomas uh, let the ball go, I, I shift my, my eyes down the field and there's Dane Jonke and there's nobody around him at all. He was in the clear. He caught it and sailed in for a touchdown. That would have been about 75 yards, maybe 80 yards, something along those lines. But they brought it back because of an offensive holding penalty. How he was getting behind the defense, I'll have, I have no idea. But, you know, Braylon Thomas certainly has the arm to get it there. And Dane Jonke has the speed and ability to get behind the defense. And those two were working their magic on Friday night. Um, and again, it isn't the first time. And they will need to work more magic this week because, uh, you know, they're going to be playing a little stiffer competition. You know, Claritin is one of the teams that uh, has multiple Whitfield championships. So that ought to be a great game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, Larry, that's our Athlete of the Week. We touched on Jackson Shodell of Mohawk for an impressive feat, winning a state gold medal in cross country, and then uh, Just, uh, Justin Boston, Braylon Thomas, and Dane Jonke for their fine performances on the gridiron. We have a secondary uh, topic that we will uh, talk about next, and we'll do that right here with Larry Kelly next on Gridiron. We all know there's an advantage to being the home team, to playing at home. And at LGKG, we have been your home team for over 90 years. We're more than just a law firm. We're your friends, your neighbors, an advocate when life takes an unexpected turn. We're not just lawyers that practice law. We live in this community, just like you. When you need us most, we're at our best. Okay, we're back with you here on Gridiron, and we're going to talk uh, playoffs here. In playoffs? Don't talk about it. playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? And this topic will be dedicated to uh, teams playing their first playoff game, and if there's nerves involved or jitters. And Larry, first off, let me ask you: you're you're a Shenango Varsity baseball coach. You've served on Ralph Blundo's basketball staff. Is the first playoff game the hardest playoff game to win? It's not the hardest. It's a little bit of a trap game because normally both at Shenango and at Newcastle, uh, you know, we were always very high seeds and we were playing teams who were seated 
a lot lower than us. So, you know, sometimes uh, a little overconfident, you know, and I remember one game specifically at Newcastle at Butler. I mean, we were a one seed. I think we were playing a 16th seed and we scored like four points in the first period of the game. And uh, I mean, but we, as the game progressed, you know, we got our feet up under us and end up winning by 30, but uh, you know, you got to be ready to go. You know, things can happen. There's a reason that these teams are in the playoff and especially in the Shannick, you know, the Shannick's a two seed and they're playing Beaver Falls. Mm -hmm. As I recall, that game went to the last play of the game where Beaver Falls got a chance to, uh, to win the game with a two point conversion. And it was a fumbled snap. So, uh, you know, even though Beaver Falls was seated really high this year, that's a quality football team. Yeah. And so, you know, Mohawk has already played a game. Union has already played a game. I think the biggest danger is when you haven't played a game, when you did get that by and you've had a little bit of time off, you know, it works in your favor to get healthy. Uh, you know, football is a long season where people get banged up. But at the same time, you know, you could get a little rusty. I don't anticipate it happening, but, uh, you know, I can say this much. At Newcastle, we've never lost a first-round playoff game. And at Shenango, we never lost one either. So uh, the big trap game is if you win the Whipple and then you play that first game after winning the Whipple championship because it's just a major, major letdown. You know, you're either playing at Wild Things Park or you're playing at the Peterson Event Center, and then the next game's at a high school field. So that's the one, Ronnie, that's a real trap game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spoke with Brandon Fillion, Wilmington uh, varsity football coach, earlier tonight. Their team is uh, having a double buy, kind of like the Big East uh, men's basketball tournament when they would get double buys. You know, they had a – well, I shouldn't say a double buy, but they, they were off that last week of the regular season. They were off last week of the – you know, the first week of the, the playoffs. So in a sense, essentially it's a double buy for them. It's they're going to go two weeks without playing. And he said, they're putting everything to good use. Uh, you know, that the time they're healing up, uh, they're going to be ready to go working on things that need to uh, touched up on working on things that maybe you don't have time to work on in the confines of a, a five or six day period of, of getting ready for a, a game. So they're going to use it that time. Well, from the sounds of it. Yeah. I mean, that's what I would anticipate. Uh, Wilmington to him because look, uh, Ronnie, they struggled this year mm -hmm. and uh, you know, they, they, this may work to their benefit. This is a team that can use a little extra time to try to get some things right. Again, they, they finished the season four and five. That's not a typical Wilmington football season, but you know, first playoff game, uh, especially if it starts, uh, not in a good way for you, a turnover here, a turnover there. The other team jumps out on top. You know, it's one and done now. It, there's no tomorrow. It is one and done. And so that adds a little pressure in the equation. Yeah, yeah for sure. Got to be happy with how Mohawk looked last week. You know, they were, they were coming off of the 13-7 uh, loss to Nishanik. Be real easy to think, okay, well, you're geared up all week for playing your, your neighborhood rival everything's on the line, a conference title, you know, going into it, you're thinking, Hey, a win and maybe a number one seed, all that sort of stuff. And then that game's over and there's gotta be a huge letdown. You know, it's naturally you're going into the playoffs. You're a decent seed, you're favored, but there's not all that, that hoopla around, around the game. Like there was the previous week, they handled it very well. They won 42, nothing. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> They, they dominated that game. And, uh, you know, they, too, have a really, really tough game this week. They play Claire, uh, uh, Amani Christian. And uh, Amani Christian, eight and two, you know, it's a, it's, it's a non-boundary school. And you never know where their players are coming from. Yeah. You know, it's, it's one of my pet peeves. But Mohawk will be ready. They, they've been ready all year. They'll be ready. How about Union, Larry? What can you say about Union? Uh, naturally rolling along this year, 
You play a, a Thursday afternoon game against Summit Academy, a winless team. They gave up a lot more points in that game than I thought they would. 22, I believe it was. And then they give up 37 in the first round game to, to Burgettstown in a game that they trailed 30 to 15 and then 30 to 17 at the half. Uh, what's your thoughts on their defense? Where, where, where do you, where's that? That's a concern. You know, that, that's a concern. You know, when, when they played Southside Beaver, they gave up a boatload of points in that game. Now there were turnovers in that game. There were two to start the, the game, two fumbled kickoffs, but I think they are concerned about that. There's no question union can score the football and they will continue to score, but Whoever said it, defense wins championships. You need to be able to make stops. You have to be able to make stops. And uh, that should be a little bit of a concern from them uh, because they, they've they been giving up a boatload of points the last few weeks. Yeah, it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of give and take with this next comment because their defense played so well in the second half. They forced a total of five turnovers for the game, and a good bit of them were in the second half. But conversely – first play of the second half went for a 64 yard run I believe it was and then the next play they were in the end zone but after that play Union's defense was was on fire uh, the rest of the game and, and they were they looked like a different unit uh, than they did in the first well, quarter. First you know quarter. Uh, there was probably some adjustments made at halftime and, mm -hmm. and there was probably some uh, get your mind right moments in the locker room at halftime too yeah. you know because again you know, Union got Clareton, buddy. And, uh, you know, Clareton's, they're very dynamic offensively, year in and year out. So, the Scotties, they better have their big boy pants on. Absolutely. Okay. Any other uh, thoughts that you might have, Larry, on the first playoff game and uh, jitters, nerves, uh, if it's a tough uh, game to get, anything like that? You know, again, I'm not so sure it's nerves and jitters. However, if things start going sideways, you must maintain your focus and not allow it to get out of control. You know, if you go down 14 nothing, you got to maintain your focus and, and not start playing out of character. You got to remain who you are and do what you do. Yeah, there's got to be a pressure of the finality too. You know, you get get down fourteen nothing. There could be no tomorrow. However, if it's the regular season, you know, in the in your mind, you got the next game to fall back on. Well, it's easy to do. It, it's easy to do because it's one and done. You must maintain your uh, your focus and and continue to be who you are. Don't don't you know if you're not a team that throws the ball a lot. If you get down 14, nothing, don't start heaving it every dot. Hmm. Be, maintain, be true to who you are and what you got you to this point in the season. That's the biggest danger in any sport. Uh, you know, I've been around a long time uh, in any sport. You know, if you're a, if you're a basketball team and uh, you know, you're not a team that, that shoots threes. If you get down early, just don't come down and start firing up threes you know, and, and, and get stops defensively one at a time. In baseball, if a team makes a little run, maintain your composure and, and, and fight your way back. Okay, come on back for one more segment. We will go over the schedule portion of uh, this week's games, and we'll do that with Larry right here on Gridiron next. We all know there's an advantage to being the home team, to playing at home. And at LGKG, we have been your home team for personal injury cases involving automobile accidents and workers' compensation claims for over 90 years. At LGKG, over 10,000 clients have trusted us to represent them. We know how to present your case to a Western Pennsylvania jury. We know what makes them tick. We know how to win. Okay, back with you here on Gridiron for one more time this week. And we are going to talk about the schedule. We have three Friday games and one Saturday game. Friday, November 10th, Beaver Falls is 6-5, and five and they go to Neshanik, 9-1. and one. Neshanik will play on this home field after having a first-round bye. This is 7 p.m. Friday. This is a WPIO Class 2A playoff matchup. Neshanik won the first matchup 27-26 in overtime on Beaver Falls' home, uh, uh, home field. 
on September 22nd. I'm sure if you talk to Fred Mazzocco and uh, the Beaver Falls coach are going to say the same thing. Both teams are much different and have evolved quite a bit since that uh, September night. Yeah, I mean, uh, Beaver Falls doesn't throw it much. They run the football. And uh, as I recall, they broke some long ones that game. And uh, it wasn't like they were driving the ball down the field because it's hard to do against the Shannon. Mm -hmm. Their offense and defensive line play is, you know, maybe the best uh, in the Whippeal. But they, Beaver Falls got some guys that can scat. And uh, as I recall, they broke some long ones. So, I, I mean, again, I would think that discipline's all about, or I should say, defense is all about discipline. Whether it's hoops, whether it's football, you got to maintain your slides, maintain your discipline, you know, to make sure that uh, Beaver Falls doesn't break a bunch of long ones uh, on you. And uh, Nishanik's well coached. I expect they'll do that. I expect Nishanik will be playing again next week. If, it, if the uh, category is intangible, who do you give the bigger check mark to? Nishanik for knowing that they can beat Beaver Falls because they did it before, or Beaver Falls which was right in that game, and it came down to a two-point conversion. If they get that, they, they win. Who do you give the bigger check mark to? Uh, Nishanik's a better football team now than Beaver Falls is. Uh, you know, that game was early in the season. I think that Nishanik has progressed, and week in and week out has gotten better. I really do. Uh, Beaver Falls, I've watched them play a few times. They're one-dimensional. They don't throw it very well. Uh, you know, they don't – sometimes their pass defense breaks down. So, Nishanik is, is the better football team, and they're better now than they were in September. So, mm -hmm. that check mark goes to the Lancers. Okay. Mohawk, 9-2 and two versus Amani Christian, which is 8-2. and two. This is 7 p.m. Friday at Moon High School. WPIO Class 2A playoffs. Monte Christian, Larry, they've lost two games, Steelton High Spire and Steel Valley. And both of those teams are awfully good. Steel Valley is the number one seed in Class 2A, the WPIO, and Steelton High Spire is a state, state power. All eight wins for Monte Christian have come by at least 27 points. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's a Pittsburgh AAU team, you know. <laughs> Laurel lost uh, a couple years ago. Was it uh, Sarah Catholic? Who beat them? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, they're Pittsburgh AAU teams. So, you know, listen, but Mohawk's good. They're really good. And they'll have to be good on Friday. I mean, they're going to have, they're going to, they're going to need to play well. And, uh, you know, they still have this. There's only been one team that shut them down. Their passing attack all year. That was Nishanik. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't expect them to get shut down next week. Yeah. They didn't need to throw the ball much last week. I think they were six of eight passing Mohawk. But, again, that they won by 42 points. So, you don't need to, you know, trot that uh, dynamic of your team out there when you're, you know, winning by 42. That's for sure. Right. And, and – you don't want to put it on film either right now, um, you know, because the other, the other team, they have coaches, you know, watching and looking for your tendencies also. Mm -hmm. Okay. The last game on Friday is union nine and two against Clareton. Also nine and two. This is 7 PM at Armstrong high school, a WPIL class one, a playoff matchup. And we touched on it in the previous segment, Larry, about union's defense Certainly going to have to rise up in this one and uh, keep Clareton at bay because otherwise Clareton's a powerful team. They got a lot of athleticism on that team and they're physical. Uh, your thoughts on this one? Uh, this is probably the game of the week because uh, Clareton has pedigree, but so does Union. You know, Union is so dynamic offensively. You know, Braylon Thomas is is a special high school football player. You know, the mere fact that he scored accounted for seven touchdowns last week is something that really shouldn't surprise too many people because he's been doing it all year. And uh, he's not the only 
gun they have. Like you said, Dane Jonke, Mike, Mike Gunn, no pun intended. Uh, they're great football players. This will be a great game. Grayson Blakely also, another yep. uh, exceptional talent for Union. So the Friday games, the Nishanik Beaver Falls winner will advance and take on the Washington McGuffey survivor. And the Union Clareton matchup a winner will go on and face the winner of Southside Beaver and Greensburg Central Catholic. So certainly no picnics for whoever uh, comes out of uh, these games. Yeah, this Southside Beaver team is, is a really good football team. But I, I'm betting Union would love another crack at them. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Okay, and then Saturday, November 11th, this game is 7 p.m. at Hickory High School. We have Wilmington, which is 4-5, and five, against Farrell, which is 9-1. and one. Wilmington has not played uh, for a couple weeks. I believe their last game was October 20th, a 58-28 loss to Grove City. And October 27th, Farrell suffered its lone loss. Uh, which was against uh, Erie Cathedral Prep, 44-18, I believe it was, somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's been a little while since Wilmington has had game action. Yeah, Erie Prep's a 6A school, and uh, they do a pretty good job of recruiting up there also. So, I mean, Farrell's good. They're really good. But I, I think the ticket here for Wilmington, Wilmington can still run the football, and they can run it as good as anybody and if you can run the ball and you can eat clock and put together some 12, 14 play drives and limit the amount of possessions that Farrell gets and hopefully get a turnover or two, you know, Wilmington can win this game. But all of that has to happen. If that mm -hmm. doesn't happen, the Farrell Steelers will be moving on. They're, they're really good. Yeah. Wilmington comes into this game averaging 329 uh, yards a game on the ground. That's impressive if it's if it's total offense, but that's on the ground. Uh, Farrell won the previous matchup, Larry, 34 to six on September 28th. Uh, Wilmington outrushed Farrell in that game, 178 to 53. That's the good news. The bad news is Farrell passed the ball for 387 yards to Wilmington's zero. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you need to be balanced. We, we've talked about that all year. And Farrell has big play capabilities. You need to be disciplined uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And again, Wilmington's going to have to run it for more than 153 yards if they're going to win this game. They're going to have to put up 350. And as I said, control the ball, control the clock, limit the possessions, and hopefully get a turnover or two. <laughs> Larry, I'm going to give you a, a coaching uh, duty here for football, either offensive coordinator, head coach, what have you. You, you, you can take it however you want it. Knowing that uh, you've got a great, a great ga uh, ground game at Wilmington, Farrell knows that. Do you come out on the first play and do some sort of like a bootleg action and, and try to hit the tight end on a pass and take Farrell by surprise? Or do you just say, we're a running team, we'll, let's stick to what we do, and, and first play of the game, we're, we're going to run the ball? What would you do first play? you got to dance with them that brung you. Wilmington runs the football, and I'm going to run the football. Now, I may save that pop pass for later in the game. If I have one in, in the playbook, I'm not so sure I'm using it up first play, um, mm -hmm. you know, but if they do, uh, it's a good move, it, you know, but again, you, you don't want to do something that's out of character and turn it over. Yeah. Yeah. They threw the ball. They being Wilmington nine times that game against Farrell. None of them were completed. One, uh, one was completed the other team. So that's where they stood with that. And again, Wilmington rushes the ball for 329 yards a game. On the ground, I spoke with Brandon Fillion earlier tonight, and he's the victory coach, Coach Kelly. He uh, he said, "We got to we got to move the ball. We got to possess it. Uh, our ground game has to be, you know, on point like it has been, and the, and those drives have to end in, in uh, points. They can't just be fifteen play drives, sixty yards, and a turnover on down or a turnover. They have to they have to result in points on the scoreboard." Sounds like he listens to our show. 
<laughs> yeah. Look, there's no science. This isn't, there's no secret to how you win high school football games. And there's certainly no secret to how Wilmington's done it year in and year out. And again, I, I agree with everything he just said, but they're probably going to need a turnover or two to go their way because Farrell has big play capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. And the winner of this game, Wilmington Farrell, advances to the championship and will play the winner of Mercyhurst Prep and Sharpsville. Wilmington, by rights, could have beaten Sharpsville uh, early in the season. If you remember, that was a back-and-forth game. They took yes. a lead, uh, I believe, 42-41 inside of a minute to go, and Sharpsville hit a long pass and, and won 49-42. So if they can get it right against Farrell, I expect Sharpsville to beat Mercyhurst Prep. Do we have another great game on our hands uh, in the District 10 championship? Boy, that would be fun to watch. That, that really would. You know, I'm, I'm rooting for Coach Philly, and he's a class act and a great coach. And, uh, of course, I'm rooting for all the guys, Coach McCutcheon, you know, Coach Mazzocca, uh, Coach Needballa. They're all they're classy guys. They're good coaches. You know, to, to get to where you're at, I always say, you know, it's all about the players. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, the coaches got to spend a lot, a lot of time in getting their team ready. And uh, these guys do. And I commend them. They've all had tremendous seasons. Hopefully, we'll be talking about them next week. Yep, absolutely. I second that as far as uh, talking to the coaches uh, before and after games. They're great to speak with. They know what they're doing. That's why they're here, Larry. They're, that's why they're in the position that they're in, uh, chasing after a district championship for sure. Absolutely. And uh, I wish them the best of luck. Uh, hopefully we're talking next week about uh, the four teams from our county moving on. That'd be, that'd be fun. That'd be great. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, these are tough games. These aren't going to, nobody has an easy game here. These are all going to be tough. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for joining us, Larry Kelly. And thank you out there for watching us. This week, best of luck to our county teams, players, coaches, fan bases, what have you. Uh, big games coming up Friday and Saturday. We'll see you back here next week on Gridiron, and we hope that we're talking about at least four more teams or, or these four teams moving on and comp still competing for a district title. He's Larry Kelly. I'm Ron Pontywise. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week right here on Gridiron. <laughs>